In this video, we're going to look at Cochran's theorem, and actually, we're going to relook at it. This YouTuber here found a little gap in the proof and pointed it out, and they were absolutely correct. So, a big thank you goes out to this YouTuber. And in this video, we're going to try to address that gap in the proof. Let xi be id uh, normal 0, 1 random variables, standard normal. And let xi be an m by 1 vector. So xi is a multivariate normal with mean 0 and covariance matrix i, the identity matrix. And this uh, x prime x is equal to this sum of x prime bi x from 1 to k with the rank of the bi matrices ri. Then this quadratic, all the quadratic forms are independent and chi square degrees of freedom uh, ri if and only if the sum of the ranks is n. And here we're going to assume that the bi's are symmetric. <clears throat> now the proof was we'll assume this is true and show that the rank has, the sum of these ranks has to be n. Then we'll assume this is true and, and prove that this is true. So x prime x we know is a chi-squared n. There's a lot of, you know, the, when you, the sum of, of standard normal random variables squared is chi-squared n. Now for each i, this quadratic form are independent and chi-squared with ri degrees of freedom. That's what we're assuming. <clears throat> so then x prime x, which is this, and since these are sums of chi-squared random variables, independent chi-squared random, it's also again a chi-squared random variable with the degrees of freedom summed. But we know this is degrees of freedom in so that implies that this sum has to be n, and so that proves it going one way. <clears throat> now let's go back the other way. Assume this is true and show that this has to hold. So by the spectral decomposition, <coughs> we, can, uh, we can decompose the bi into pi lambda i, where the pi are orthogonal matrices and lambda i are diagonal. And then this uh, x prime x, if we put the identity matrix in, it's the same, but we're assuming that this is true, right? So that implies that, that the sum of these matrices is the identity. Now, let's notationally do this a little different. Let's, instead of just summing BIs, let's pull out the ith one and then sum the remaining and call this CI. So this is all the B matrices, but the, except for the ith one, and then this is the ith one, and so their sum is still <clears throat> the identity. So the identity matrix has a rank of n, which is bi plus ci, and then there's a common property that says then the rank of the, the sum of the ranks of the individuals is always bigger than or equal to this. But we know that this one is r or ri and we know that it's at least n right but it can't be bigger than n because the matrices is n you know dimension and so that implies <clears throat> that this one has to have a rank of n minus ri if this is rank ri now since i is equal to this sum bi plus ci and it's positive definite because i is positive definite then bi and, and ci can be simultaneously diagonalized. And I actually think it's if there's a linear combination of matrices that are positive definite, then they can be diagonalized. So that's a theorem. <clears throat> so let's do that. So P, uh, this right here by the spectral decomposition is lambda i, where these are the eigenvalues of, of bi. So then let's take this and of course, PI are, is an orthogonal matrix consisting of the eigenvectors. So let's pre and post multiply that by or CI by those. But CI is I minus BI. <clears throat> and then you multiply these in. And then uh, PI prime PI is actually the identity matrix. So we get it back. And then times this, we get lambda, right? So now this is the identity matrix, and this has lambdas down the diagonal to R, R one of or I, R I of them, 
right? Everything else is zero. So when we <clears throat> subtract this, we get this. So it's a diagonal matrix with um, um, this. So there's there's n minus ri ones, and then we have one minus the lambdas. But we know that the matrix ci is has rank ni, right? So the this diagonal matrix can't have more than n minus ri diagonal elements. So, right, because these are orthogonal and pre and post multiplying or by orthogonal matrices doesn't change the rank of this matrix, right? So the rank of this is the same as the rank of CI, but this matrix is this diagonal matrix and the rank of a diagonal matrix is the non-zero elements, right? So these elements actually have to be zero because we already have n minus ri elements. Then that implies all these lambdas are one, right? To make these zero. So that implies the eigenvalues of bi are zeros and ones. And actually that implies that it's a idempotent matrix. But we since we did this arbitrarily, generically, that means all the uh, eigenvalues are zeros and ones. And so, so let's see what it says. So since the rank of CI is the rank of I minus lambda I, which is N minus RI, that implies all the lambdas <coughs> are one. <coughs> so now, if we look at this, now because all the eigenvalues, the BJs, or should have said BIs, are zeros and ones, they are idempotent matrices. And I have a video called idempotent matrices for details of that. Now, since the BJs are symmetric and idempotent matrices with rank RJ, then that means this quadratic form, because these are multivariate normal, R chi-squared with rj degrees of freedom. And I have a video called Distribution of Quadratic Forms Part 1s that proves that. And then by theorem 2, in this video, which we'll do next, the product of these bi's and bj's are zero. And this is for all i and j not equal. Now, since x is multivariate normal zero i, and each quadratic form, call it qi, is a chi-squared with ri degrees of freedom, and the product of these uh, idempotent matrices are zero, that implies the qi's are independent. Now, I don't have a video proving that, but it's actually such a common uh, proof or theorem that um, I'm not proving it here, but I probably put out a video later proving it, that you, if you, the product of these, uh, this, uh, quadratic matrix or not the matrix here if the products are independent then that quadratic form is independent and so now and that's actually what we wanted to show that these quadratic forms are all independent and they're chi squared with r degrees of freedom that's what we wanted to show and so therefore the theorem is proven now let's prove theorem 2 in this video and then we'll be finished <clears throat> so here let each n by n matrix b1 through bk be symmetric idempotent and the sum is i and that's what we had in the first theorem then we want to show that the products are are zero and this is for all i and j not equal <clears throat> since bi are symmetric and idempotent the eigenvalues are zeros and ones so by the spectral decomposition theorem we can find a matrix p such that when we pre and post multiply it, we get lambda i, and that's a diagonal matrix that with ones down the diagonal and zeros elsewhere, r of them, because that has a rank of r. Now, p is non singular, so let's let cj equal this. So remember, here we're multi pre and post multiplying by bi, so the p's here are for this specific matrix to make that diagonal. So when we pre and post multiply another B matrix, remember this is I, 
then we just get some matrix back. We don't know that it's diagonal. And, and so note that uh, PJ is symmetric, right? So if you transpose it, you get the same back because this is symmetric. And it's idempotent. When you pre and post multiply, you get this back. Now, because of this, the diagonal elements are non-negative. And, and see this video here. <coughs> so now, when we, we know that the identity matrix is this. So these are orthogonal matrices. So the P prime P is the identity, right? But then we, and then sticking in the identity doesn't change it. So this is still the identity, but I is equal to this sum. So then when you bring this into the sum, we get this, but on when J is equal to I, we get this diagonal matrix, right? And then the rest are what we were calling the C's. Now, if we subtract this matrix to the other side, then the ones down the diagonal at the, the first RI of them cancel with this, so they're all zero, and then we have ones down the rest, okay? So that implies that these CJs, uh, the sum of these is a diagonal matrix with ones down the last N minus RI. Now this is, now the reason I didn't put it very in much detail here but this is the explanation <coughs> so since the CJ's are symmetric and idempotent it says that the um, diagonal elements are positive okay or non-negative so you can't add up non-negative numbers and and so we're only talking about the first ri of them, right? So these ones, they're they're canceled with this, so they're zero. So you can't add up. And now this matrix, of course, is a n by n matrix, but these diag the top diagonal elements are all non-zero, and you can't add up non-zero elements to get zero. Remember on the top over here. So the these top elements have to be zero. But then in this uh, video called item potent matrices, if the diagonal elements are zero or one, that says all the other elements in the column and the row for that diagonal zero element are also zero. So that says the top half of this is zero. And that's what this is saying. So it's diagonal. But then that means the bottom half are ones, right? Because it has to be one. And if they're one, then all the other elements in the columns and, and rows are zero. And again, that's in this video here. <clears throat> so that means for each CJ, now the sum is diagonal, right? But C, each CJ has to be what I'm going to call a block diagonal. So it's zeros, but this bottom half can be some matrix, whatever that is. So CJ is a symmetric idempotent matrix in our... Uh, where this bottom one is in our n minus r by n minus r matrix. So when we look at this product, which is now remember uh, p p prime is the identity matrix because those are orthogonal matrices, and then but this here is what we were calling lambda i, and this was c j right because it's the jth one now this over here we said by the spectral decomp was a diagonal matrix with ones down the first r elements and then this was a block diagonal so this piece is dj you know but when you multiply these together you get zero you get the zero matrix but these are orthogonal so you can you can pre and post multiply to take those to the other side and so that says bi and bj are zero and and actually that's what we wanted to show that the product is zero all right well that's all i have for today hope you enjoyed that and many thanks to the youtuber that that pointed out that little gap in the proof much appreciated um please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye